What's up, YouTube Box Communities, Boy, Mr. Universal Sports? About to cover those two World Championship fights that we saw. One at 147 pounds, the other at 140 pounds. First, I'm about to cover that Devin Alexander versus Lee Purdy fight. And I just want to say that Devin Alexander looked, looked much better in this fight than he did against Randall Bailey. Some people called it a boring fight, but we all, I'm a fan of the sweet science. I'm a fan of boxing. I think that I thought that was a good fight as well. Let's get into it. Here's what I liked about Devin Alexander. He worked the body and the head. Now, what Roy Jones always says this, you work the body, you work the head, and you keep them on balance. Keith Thurman does this well, and Floyd does this well also. And what I noticed that he do a right hook to the body, and then the left, 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 uh, <clears throat> then the left over the top. Also, what he would do is do a double right, land a right hook to the body, and land a right uppercut. <laughs> and also, what, what I noticed is that Devin Landon used a lot of uppercuts. He and I said this in an earlier video, I think the Devin Alexander versus the Juan Urango video or the him versus Katelic video that Devin has a very good uppercut and he used it today and all we see was Lee Purdy say goes like this every time Lee Purdy, Purdy used the high guard. Most people when most people do when they use the high guard when you use nine hooks. When you land a hook, you gotta land a short go for a short hook because if you land a right hook, you leave yourself open to be countered with a with the right hand or a left hand, depending on which which boxer you're fighting. But Devin Alexander kept his elbows in the landed uppercuts to break the high guard of Lee Purdy, which I think that was the only thing positive I had Lee Purdy doing. And and now this is the, one of the best stats. And this stat is nearly always true. If you land more power punches, you usually win the fight. And Devin Alexander landed 157 power punches and out, out of 380, which is 41 percent. And that won him the fight. And obviously Devin landed the cleaner, more effective punches and he didn't get hit much. And but he hurt his hand. In, in the fight, but I don't know if he's if it's broken. He has to go to the doctor and see. We'll find out later in the week, but we, we, we'll see. Now, Lee, one thing about Lee Purdy I didn't like was the fact that he didn't he missed weight. But we found out he missed weight. This is the second fight in the world that he missed weight. But being that he's only five foot eight and a half, and he can't, and he, you know, I, I think he has to work harder to make 147 pounds because. Obviously, if he can't make 147, he's going to have to move up, and I think that's totally unprofessional. He had, even though this was a short term, he had four weeks to make the weight, but it didn't happen. And also, if you're going to, Lee Purdy just threw punches in the beginning of the round, but he just kept on doing the high guard, not throwing enough punches. He has to jab his way in to try and land his power shots, and he didn't do that. Now. Lee Purdy was also obviously a replacement for Kel Brook. I wanted to see that fight, but Kel, with the injury to Alexander and the injuries to Kel Brook, the, it was postponed, and obviously the best they could come up with was Lee Purdy. They offered another guy, I think, but the other guy could say, you know, I wasn't, I'm not ready, which I respect, but Lee Purdy's not even in the top, a top five welterweight in Britain. They could, I think they could have found something a little bit better, but does this put Devin Alexander in, and I said this on Facebook, and I said this on YouTube, on many people's channels, that I would like to see a Devin Alexander versus Floyd Mayweather fight. I know I'm going to get panned for this, but I think with the rest of the people that he's fought and beaten, even though some of those were, had were losses like Katelnik or close fights where he could either way, either way like Katelnik and Lucas Matisse, who we saw today, was the fact that, I mean, I think he did, or also... If another option for Deborah Alexander would be to fight the winner of Malinagi Broner. That would be a good fight. If it's Adrian Broner versus Deborah Alexander, it'd be a good way to see to fight. It'd be a good way to gauge to see if, he, if Devin can be somebody slick, even though Paulie's pretty slick too. Also, Amir Khan is planning on moving into 147. I'm about to bring up Amir Khan a little bit later in the video, but Amir Khan may move to 147 because he said in a report that his chin may be more durable at 147. That which may be a possibility because he is a tall guy at 147 and maybe he was killing himself to make 140 and 135 and that maybe he really is a natural 147 pounder and that's the, so that's maybe the reason why they you know let's move him up. But I'm gonna bring up uh, something else later in the video. Now let's get to the main event. Lucas Matisse versus Lamar Peterson. What I just wanna say this people Lucas Matisse is a beast, and obviously the one the, the one bit stat that 
I always, I always write my tail of the tape, and one big stat was Lamar, Lamar Peterson's reach was 72, Lucas Matisse say was 70, 69. And Lamar Peterson, in the beginning of the first round, I had a winning. I checked my Facebook page, Brandon Mayweather. I had a, I, I had a win in the first round, but the second round, when Lucas Matisse stepped up that pressure, I mean, you just can't avoid him. He's just a beast. I mean, he knocked him out in the third round, devastating. I never seen my Lamar Peterson get nobody's ever put him away like that. And I don't really think I would love to see a Lucas Matisse versus Danny Garcia fight. Now, obviously, this proposed tournament, unofficial tournament, was the winner. The prize was supposed to be America, and I disagree. And I agree with 78 Fight News and Blood that they obviously you know, some of these guys that America only beat lost to. And I'd love to see him get rematches with, but it seemed like they, they he avoided the stiff competition. He said, "Look, we put Murakai as the prize." But now I think when they realized they probably would like Golden Boy probably realized that Matisse was going to win, and Murakai's question with Chin is like, "You know, let's go move up Murakai to just the 147." I'll get that phone call later. Let me finish this video. And they said, we, we, "You know what? <laughs> We're just going to have Danny Garcia and Lucas Matisse." But I don't think Danny Garcia wants that fight. He, he was like, yeah, yeah, yeah I'll, I'll fight him. But Lucas Matisse, in my opinion, is a beast. And he is the best 147 pounder in the world. Also, I don't want to get fanned for this. But I think if he wins this 140 pound tournament, if he beats Garcia, I'd like to put him in a, give, give him a Mayweather shot. Anyway, tell me what y'all think of that. I mean, a Devin Alexander versus Floyd Mayweather, Lucas Matisse versus Floyd Mayweather. That's obviously somewhere down the road. But anyway, it's your boy, Mr. Universal Sports, and I'm out. Peace.